Hi, I'm Lara Suggs. Um, I'm actually starting my YouTube videos tonight. I'm a hairstylist in Pennsylvania. I have been so blessed to know the Lord since I was six years old. And recently God has really put on my heart that the world has become such a cold, negative place. And as we wait for him to return, what does that actually look like with all of our stuff in the way? What does it look like to be uh, a daughter of the Most High God? What does it look like to tell people about the Lord? I have grown up in this town. I've actually gone to a high school near here, grew up in this town, was 300 pounds in high school, I was definitely not the beauty queen or the people that they went to um, to look pretty, to feel beautiful. Went to beauty school after graduating at the age of 17 and now have been standing behind the chair for 16 years, cutting hair, doing makeup, selling jewelry, makeup, weddings, all of that stuff for 16 years. And while I've done that, I've really revealed something inside of myself. God has put a fire burning within me to speak out and to undo the lies, the lies in the Christian church. Am I a sinner? Oh, yeah, big time. I struggled so badly with being, feeling good, being thin enough, being beautiful enough, being popular enough, and men and lust is such a powerful force that I fell into that. After high school, into beauty school, I recognized how quickly you could fall downhill, how quickly you could do something that you said you would never do, you would never have issues with. And I struggled with men, I struggled with lust. I tell my girls all the time, what would your scarlet letter be if you had to wear it around your neck how would we identify you in culture to understand what you struggle with? Let me give you an instance. So that guy's drugs. That guy's, uh, he doesn't even know if he wants to be a man. That guy's alcohol. Uh, that guy's pornography. Well, that guy's a cheater. Um, that guy's lazy. Or that girl is sarcastic or, or condemning. Well, I'm lust bunny all the way. Whore, prostitute, whatever you want to say. I mean, outside of God's will, being a pure woman, I was pouring around. The age of 21, my life changed because I allowed that box to open. I had been accused at a younger age of being sexually promiscuous. I love those lines that Christians say, oh gosh, the scripture shaming comes out. We constantly throw things out to make people feel afraid. Like we we're going straight to the pits of hell. I do believe, yeah, that's where we are headed without salvation, without God's love, without forgiveness, without compassion. Absolutely, that's the path. Um, thank goodness that I did accept salvation at the age of six and I've been able to really spend time with God. I, uh, I know this. When I decided to allow sin in my life, I paid the consequences for that. I have to own it though. I'm lust bunny through and through. I don't feel victimized by that. That's my issue. I need to go to God with that issue. There is not one person on this planet that's gonna be enough. I have a fabulous husband, by the way, you know, it's like I'm reformed. I have been in a, a fantastic relationship. I'm married. God has given me an amazing man. That doesn't mean that I struggle every day with that. I just understand the power of it. I understand what happens when we allow those things to get in and then we play victim to them. And the reason I chose to start the videos tonight is because of the issue in our culture with sex. Same sex marriages had come up and I come home and I usually do this with my husband. I rant. I'm an extrovert and you'll get to know this on the videos. I will talk and talk and talk. Now, talking to these videos is a little hard. There's no one to kind of like talk off of. So I'm sorry if my energy is a little low, but I said to him, nothing about the gay community is being respected because the straight community feels like it's not being respected. The bottom line is we don't respect anybody in this country unless they're famous and rich and we like them. The gay community is dealing with sex only. 
The straight community doesn't want to deal with sex. We still have shame about sex. We don't know how to understand it. We don't know how to own it. We don't know how to say out loud that we've messed it up. We have all kinds of things in this culture that have nothing to do with glorifying God. The church is just as yucky as the unchurched. So why do we want this God that people speak of? What's the purpose of walking with God? If all you have to deal with is the condemnation of the church, what's the reason for giving your life to Christ, going to church when you want to sleep or do anything else? The purpose was to serve God. People have gotten away from serving God because it's tough. I know firsthand how tough that is because things can get in the way. But when we're unkind or when we're rude or when we're lashing out and we're name calling, and we're wanting to set things on fire and wanting to see people hurt and wanting to, oh, the country's gone to hell in a handbasket. Folks, the first two people got kicked out of the garden. The first two straight people got kicked out of the garden. We don't even get out of Genesis and Sodom and Gomorrah is burned. And the four straight people that were taken out of the city, the wife turned to a pillar of salt and the two daughters had sex with their father just two chapters away. Straight people get sex messed up all the time. God doesn't like homosexuality, but he loves the person. God doesn't like debt. God doesn't like gluttony. God doesn't like lies. God doesn't like human torture, murder, rape. Uh, the straight community does a lot of that stuff. <laughs> we have so much crap on the straight side that the gay community sees all of our sin, but not our love. And had we done what was right to stand up for what was right 40, 50 years ago, our political system and our justice system would not be broken. The Christian church wusses out for Christ on a daily basis. Unless you're rich or becoming famous with your ridiculous behavior, you sit at home, you watch every foul, nasty show there is that has some kind of butt exposure, boob exposure, foul language, and, well, Modern Family, for instance, people love that show. Of course people love that show because they sit down, they sit back, and they watch people work on issues in families that they're not currently working on while they eat processed foods and hate one another. They like the gay couple in Modern Family because they watch that it isn't about flamboyance. It isn't about acting weird in some kind of gay club with a high-pitched voice. That's that is the radical of the gay community. You don't think there's radicals of the straight community? Come on. There's all kinds of radicals in our community. We have free will to choose that. Free will was something that the Christian church should have brought up and told you. Hi, I, I've accepted salvation. My name is Laura. We'll have a little salvation card. Yep, got it when I was six. Now it's beside my lip gloss and my purse. <laughs> Sometimes I'm going to have an attitude. Most of the time I'm not, but sometimes I'm going to have an attitude. I might be disrespectful. I might swear. I might swear a lot in one day. Oh, Laura, you go to church. You say you love Jesus. Yeah, yes, I do. Was not actually questioning my God when I was pissed off about how somebody was driving on the road. <laughs> Just a person not putting God's word into play. That's all we're dealing with here. A little free will. Free will to swear. Bastard. Learn how to drive. We all do it. The problem is we put that on levels. That's the reality. So gay is on a level that we're just not okay with because God hates that. God doesn't like a lot of things. And in all things, we are to glorify him. If we haven't walked in their footsteps, we don't know them. We haven't talked to them. We haven't hugged them. We haven't laughed with them. We haven't cried with them. These are not people asking you to join into orgies, open orgies in some kind of weird field. With, with fireworks. I swear to God, people always see the extreme in this. So people want to have their cake made for their wedding. People want to have their hair done. Straight community, listen up. If you start living under the standards that you make for the gay community, good luck. You won't make it an hour. You people are unbelievable. The one thing that we have covered up all day, you want to assume drives the boat in this country. Sex in itself is a pleasure sensory. Yes, it does procreate life if you're procreating, 
I right now am only in that for the pleasure box. No procreation here, and yet I'm still having sex for pleasure reasons. Selfishness and desire and wanting to be wanted, these are things that God put into our, our bodies. Now, how we use our bodies is our choice. He's not just going to come like down out of heaven and make it really easy for people not to be gay. Listen up, folks. Sin is everywhere. It is rampant. It has been rampant since Genesis. We have not recreated any new thing. You're not concerned about human trafficking. You're not concerned about uh, pedophilia. You're not concerned about sodomy. You're not concerned about what goes on in jails. You're not concerned about the fact that we have the swinger community. We have people being tortured inside of houses, missing for generations, and then making it onto the front of People magazine. These women have been gone for years. They're right underneath our nose. And instead of looking for them and, and, and putting all of our time and effort into that, we're worried about rainbow parades. The problem is, it's because the things that God stated in the Bible were not given to us to shame people. It's a guide. If God has said things that you are concerned about, then first you need to go to prayer. The political views would not have been changed had you stood up against the justice system long before gay marriages was put through. Shame on all of us for being angry when we're not willing to actually march to Washington and make things change. You're not really concerned about Washington. You just want to make sure you can blame the gay community. It's not about blame. It's first about love. Where is love for these people? You don't really have love for your Bible and love for understanding. I know. I've been there. I absolutely have been there. I have spent a lot of my life choosing bad things and yet still loving God. How does that happen? Because we all suffer. We all need a savior. We all need to be seen and loved and accepted. We don't do that in this culture. Do you think that every gay couple is just going to have this great life? They'll go home to their like great food, whatever gays eat. I don't even know. Do they buy dogs? God, who knows? Like it's crazy what those people do. We, the straight community, has to start looking up and paying attention. If it is not about loving people, then it isn't about God. And I'm sorry, world, because we forgot to tell you. Oh, by the way, we do believe in a God. He's coming back. If you believe in a place called heaven, then you believe in a place called hell. And if that is true, there are a lot of souls who are missing, missing the boat here. If we make it about sin, then none of us, I don't care what you have, we all have sin. The one thing we all have that people should be concerned with as an entire country is debt. No one wants to talk about that. The Christian community and the Christian schools have just as much debt, if not more, because we don't want to be accountable. And if you think that the gay community is all just sex and sexual issues, then the straight community has to start fessing up to homosexual behavior behind closed doors, menage trois, molestation, pedophilia, pornography, swinging. These kind of things are just unbelievable. Unbelievable that the straight community is doing. We don't want to be held accountable for that because when we leave the house and we appear to be okay, we appear to be single or we appear to be married, we don't actually have to tell people what we're involved in. And when two men and two women live together and they say they're gay, they're explaining that perhaps if they have sex, ah, it's of the perverse kind. Ah, yes. Well, we live together, but we don't have sex. We're just, we're just gay in spirit. So you assume that they're actually having sex. Sex is something that has literally run the world since Eve got here. If anyone hasn't noticed, sex has been tripping people up since the beginning of time because there is so much to try to understand about our bodies and about the pleasure of our bodies and the look of our bodies and wanting to be touched, held, and desired. Some of us struggle more with lust than others, and that's okay. That's okay. I'm lust bunny through and through. I understand it. I'm not going to judge these people for being sexually active when I needed to answer to the Lord for what I was doing with my temple. STDs and emotions and hearts being broken and promises. 
are something that can happen to the gay community or the straight community. So the gay community is not dealing with procreation, but we're both dealing with the temple of our body and God has said to take care of that. And when we walk outside of that, we're all falling short. In all things, God is to be glorified. If you're standing up for your country and you want to be um, forthright about the fact that you should not have to be okay with gay marriage, then the country wouldn't be here if people talked openly about the fact that you have free will, just like I have free will. We're not always going to accept what we do, but if we can at least speak to each other, then we can agree to disagree. The gay community might not have pushed for the same-sex marriage issue. Maybe it's a same-sex love fest. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe another word but they hit the Christian church because we fall into that every time. We have literally fallen for that game since there was media. Pick on the Christians. Oh yeah, because we're quick to scripture shame. Up oh, says right here, sinner, go into hell. Yeah, it, it's funny because the person reading the Bible is seriously like his house just foreclosed. His wife left him and his dog bit his ankle, but no one calls him on it because he's straight. He just gets away with doing that stuff. It's crazy. <laughs> but the thing is, is that you can laugh and you can joke. If it isn't first to love these people, it was not about, not about God at all. We're not victims here, folks. I would be surprised if anyone in this tiny little Pennsylvania area actually has to deal with anything. Here's the thing. If someone comes to my salon and wants to get married and is in a same-sex relationship, this is my prayer. Lord, you know Lara Lust Bunny. You loved her and you forgave her. You knew exactly how black my heart and vagina was. You never made me feel worthless. Your word remained true. Every single time I made a mistake or I chose to do wrong against the temple of my body that you created, I paid the consequences. But thank God for your grace. And if this woman or man comes into my salon, please let him see the light of you shining through me. Make me available to be an evangelist for you, Lord. And if they happen to come in and like my little hair, my jewelry, my watches, my ability. Now I can't, I can't make their cake. Somebody else is going to have to do that. Then maybe what they'll see is Lara, just a person who needed a savior and who had her own sin, who had her own sexual sin. Straight community, you need to start telling yourself that we have our own sexual sins here. We need to be honest. And I hope that what they can see is they have an opportunity to believe in the most high God. The craziest thing is, I've known these statements. I've known this God my whole life. And in the last couple of months, in the middle of the night, my dream is to become a motivational speaker and travel around the world and give glory to God because we don't need to beat people with the Bible. They actually need to see us, hear us. I can talk to any gay and tell them they're real. They have value. They're a person. As long as they're not reaching out, lashing out, and actually hurting me, you know, tearing me into some kind of wild sex fest, dragging my sweet, sweet, luscious, peachy body into this weirdness, we're just two people on the planet. Now recognize the radical behavior in our culture is something that no one likes. No one likes the weird radicals. They always are such an extreme left. No one has any idea what they're doing. Folks, they need to be there. You know why? It keeps us accountable. It never allows us to get too comfortable. There's always somebody out there hurting deeply for years. Parents have been uninvolved. People aren't uninvolved. Neighborhoods are uninvolved. Coworkers are uninvolved. CEOs are uninvolved. And we are people. We need to be seen, loved, and cared for. And we're not. We're not doing that in our communities. No wonder our country is going to hell in a handbasket, as all the self-righteous Christians say. We're all participating in it. We have different issues of why we need to go to God, whether it's food, sugar, 
pornography, laziness, depression, anxiety, sarcasm, self-righteousness, always going to church. Christians, who's going to evangelize if you're always in the same circles? We have to stop plugging into Christian radio. Who's deciding when God's coming back? Weird. Weird. Revelation says no man knows, but we'll all plug into this blood moon stuff. <laughs> Look, there is no guy right now that God has revised Revelations edition one <laughs> because he said no one knows. Instead of wasting all of our time and doing all of those things, how do we see ourselves speaking to the people and saying, no, my God, but don't always know, see my decisions as my God. He gave me free will. And I'm sorry when I trip you up and I make mistakes and I make bad choices. They're mine to make. In, in this world, we're going to make mistakes. What's great is to be accountable. Until God comes back, we are to glorify him and to evangelize his name. That's difficult when you can't see yourself as a child of God. And he has really revealed that to me. Lara, you are my daughter. You need to tell people about my love. You need to make a difference. You need to stand up. Now, I've been standing up and making waves in my very small community out here. I have a tendency to um, call out very passive, aggressive, bad behavior, and I've recognized people don't like it. No, of course not, because we'd all have to be accepting that that's the decisions we've made. And the gay community is in our face and it's claiming something. And what we're really afraid of is, well, we've wussed out for God for so long now. Now they're passing this stuff in Congress. And I don't know about y'all, but I've been to Revelations lately. And it says man will be with man and woman will be with woman. And children will be away from parent. And we will be gnashing of teeth and all this, the blood up to the horse's bridle. I, I don't even know. I don't even know. But it sounds as if we're already there. Yeah, the people who live in a bubble who never ever go just but from their own grocery store to the end of town when they see a black or a gay they think that like oh i don't know i don't know world's gone gone crazy world's gone rogue no folks the world still is full of really great people we have been moving towards revelation since the day adam and eve got kicked out of the garden no man knows when god is coming back but bad is bad it's relative i'm pretty sure sodom and gomorrah was wretched and we've not lived through that yet we have not seen hail and brimstone come down to the united states and tear up our cities yet no because god's not going to do that see free will is a funny thing what we don't understand is all the stuff we put into play generations ago is trickling down to our children who become adults who have their own children and since we don't speak clearly we don't speak honestly we don't tell our children children your mom and i haven't been sexually active in 30 years and that's why we talk to people i can't even stand her took my life took everything didn't cook nothing the straight community is acting so crazy we can't see god those children are suffering. They're dealing with issues, watching their parents look at pornography, watching their parents not come home and speak. I'm not saying everyone suffers with that, but I can tell you right now, I look a lot of men in the eye and I look a lot of women in the eye and I can tell you who's having sex, who's not having sex, who's in debt, who's looking at pornography and who really hasn't talked to each other in a decade in their own kitchens. It's happening here. It's happening everywhere. The Christian church needs to stand up and say, we are sorry we're so messed up. We accepted salvation, but we didn't really understand what that meant. And because we're so far away from loving oneself and sitting and petitioning God to what it looks like to be a good steward of all things, our temple, our money, our towns, our families, since we won't do that anymore, we have gotten so far away. This is going to be a very long trek to understand because all people want to do is blame instead of sit down and pray because we don't believe. See, and God told us if we believed, things would change. I'm telling you right now, for 33 years, I've been walking alongside of God. I've never been mad at him. I know when I've signed myself up for hell. Believe me, I have. 
walked in a bit of hell here on planet Earth enough times. Oh, Lord, why? Why am I going through this? What happened? Well, Lara, remember when you got on that road about six months back yonder? Yeah, the, the road that you were just like, I'm on this. This is the road I'm on right now. No one better ask me any questions. And then down the road, you do all this, 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 and this. Sort of outside of my will. Yeah, honey, that, that was the road you chose, remember? Oh, yeah, it's going to be like that, God. Dropping it on me like that. No, The Holy Spirit wasn't going to nudge me. Wasn't going to like go, Laura, child of God, stop. No, no, because I actually had the Bible and I had the decisions and I was able to make them. And, you know, we all have crazy families and my mom dropped me on my head and I was made fun of in high school. And, I, you know, my second toe curls to the right and doesn't look good in sandals. You can make up whatever excuse you want for making the decisions on planet Earth. But who are we accountable to? I'm not just speaking to the, the gay community. Who are we accountable to as the church? I mean, if Jesus is right beside your ketchup bottle at home and your family has gone rogue and it's gone rogue for like a hundred years, no one's really done a damn thing for Jesus, then I don't think we should be too upset when Congress is pushing things through that it's been moving us right to Revelations. Funny thing is, in Revelations, if you're fighting on God's team, which by the way, he wins, our God has won the victory. There would be no fear. People would be like, wow, it's getting close. Maybe I'll see my savior today. No, it's not like that. It's what are we going to lose? I have a new top from the mall I need to wear yet. I saw that boy at the gym. I want to go on my vacation. No, I'm in for surgery next week. I'm getting my face done. I'm finally going to be sexy. What is it that we are so worried for? Armageddon is one of the last battles that we'll have to deal with before we spend eternity with our Heavenly Father. We're not excited to be with God, and we're not loving the gay community. I asked the Christian church, what exactly is it that we are doing? And do we really believe in this God that we says loves us? Are we forgiving ourselves? Are we watching from our 20s to our 30s to our 40s to our 50s and really owning up to our bad behavior? Are we more concerned about what I get? We should just accept the decisions that we've made have consequences. Thank God we're alive. Thank God we live in the United States of America. And make a change if you want to make a change. But don't act like you want to make a change if you don't. And don't put God in that sentence if you really aren't concerned about love. First, you'd have to go to people in love. I think I could honestly go up to every person who is dealing with same sex and talk to them about God, not about their sexuality. If, I, if they ask me what's in the Bible about their sexuality, I will explain to them that God cautioned us because it brings forth bad behavior. But so does everything else. That's why we were given commandments. That's why we were told to be a good steward of our lives. Because it's not just sex that leads to condemnation. All right. That's enough deep talk for tonight. I've gone way over my timing that I told my husband that I would do. But I, this is actually the second time. This is the second one. Yeah. We looked at the first one. I was like, I went all over the place. I had to start over. So I, I want to thank you for listening in and thank you. This is my first video. I, I want to see myself reach out. I've, I've really been praying with God and saying, okay, let's talk to the people. Let's get real. So sheer passion it is on YouTube. Thank you so much. I'll be back. Bye.